Hey guys, it's Adrian and today I'm reviewing this Wook Wired 2K Smart Video Doorbell. One of the standout features of this doorbell is that it has on-device AI facial recognition technology. You can also play customized greetings based on the face that it detects. Now it also has 24 seven recording or you can have motion based recordings. It has local storage. And most importantly, there are no monthly fees with this. Thank you to Wook for sending us out for an unbiased review, but let's take a look at the features and you can decide if this could be your next video doorbell. The box comes with everything to get started. So there's a manual security sticker. There's the positioning guide to mount it, a detached pin, the video doorbell. There's a standard mount and an optional 15 degree side mount or wedge mount with 3M tape applied for installation. There's a chime along with different attachments for the region you live in. And there's also screws if you wanna go with a screw in type of installation versus the 3M tape, along with additional wiring, again, optional to extend your existing wiring. The Whoop video doorbell looks really nice and I'm a fan of this contrasting black and white color scheme. So we have this glossy black front finish and it's wrapped in this white plastic housing, which brings it in at around 105 grams or 0.23 pounds, pretty lightweight. If we take a closer look at the top, that's where we'll find the camera module. We have an indicator light microphone, the Wook logo and a tactile doorbell ringer. The bottom of the unit houses the speaker grill and then we have the attachment areas that go into the mount. Now we have two screws. That's where you're gonna attach your chime wiring and there is a sync button there as well. Now this has an IP65 rating and you can see this is you know, nicely sealed here. If I open this up, that's where you're gonna pop in your local 256 or up to 256 micro SD card. And then we also have a USB type C port here. The chime unit is also really compact and lightweight. So it's an all plastic build. We have the speaker grill and indicator light, the sync button, and you can see at the back, this is where you would slot in the correct attachment for your country. I'm using the North American one, but depending on if you're in Asia or Europe, you also have other connectors. If you ever need to remove the video doorbell to say, change out the memory card for a larger one, you would just take the supply detach tool here pop it into the bottom opening and then just separate the video doorbell from the mount. The Wook video doorbell has a three megapixel sensor that's capable of 2K HDR recordings. There's 133 degrees field of view. You also have black and white infrared night vision and you can insert up to a 256 gigabyte micro SD card. It connects to a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection. There's an IP65 rating and the operating temperature is from negative 20 Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. So I've downloaded the app and what I'm gonna do is temporarily provide power to the video doorbell before I mount it with a Type-C cable. Next, I'm gonna to go to Add Device in the app, pick Wired Video Doorbell, and pick the Wired Smart Doorbell Pro. I'm gonna pick Existing Wiring, and I'm just gonna skip the installation. Now, when we get to turn on the doorbell, it says wait for the indicator light to flash red, which it is. And the device is connected, so that was really Aaron quick and successful. easy. Let's connect the chime to the system. So we'll pick Doorbell Chime picked it, we want to connect to the doorbell and we're going to go ahead and press the button for three seconds. Pairing successful. The doorbell is now added to the app. I'm going to start a live view and you can see that was actually really quick. Everything is working perfectly. So the next step is to permanently mount this. To install, remove your existing doorbell chime, run the wiring through the mount, secure the mount to your door frame, connect the wiring with the screws at the back of the unit, and then finally install the door frame to the mount. You can see we have options for the chime here and some quick options for the doorbell. So the first thing is that you can go ahead and snooze certain type of notifications, so ring, motion, human, and a duration between 30 minutes to six hours. Now we can also go ahead and jump right into the events playback and you can see that loads pretty quickly. Let's take a look at live view. And you can hear that car going by. So the microphone pickup on here is pretty good. From here, we can also make the phone, you know, full screen. We still retain our options at the side and you could zoom in, take a look around and then zoom back out. But I'm just gonna go back to this portrait type of view. And you can see we have options here to take a manual recording. We also have the option to take a manual snapshot if we like. And we can also speak to whoever's outside. So you just tap on speak. You also have some pre-recorded uh, replies that you could go ahead and use. So we have one that says you can leave it right there, we will be right there, or please leave. You can also change the tone which is super fun to play around with. So you can have your original voice. 
a male filter, female filter, or a neutral filter. You also have the option to turn on an alarm and we could set the quality of the feed from HD to SD. But let's go ahead and take a full view of the setting. Facial recognition is on and the detection sensitivity is set to high. There's an option to clear all facial data, but if I click into facial data, you can see there's a lot of unnamed faces and I have one called Adrian. If I click on that, you know, you can see that there's a bunch of different records on here. Now, what's really important about this is from here, I could see whichever events were triggered by this specific face and I can set the personalized greeting. So, you know, it'll uh, only play that personalized greeting if I, if, if I ring the doorbell, if the doorbell detects me standing there, or if I do either or both, or I could just turn that off completely. I've set it for both just for testing purposes and that works pretty well. Now I could go into a manage sound I could change the sound so I could record a pre-recorded message, you know, something custom that I want to say like happy birthday, happy anniversary, whatever. I can convert text to sound, you know, I would just type out something and, you know, the camera would just play that. Or I can just go ahead and pre-select anything from Wook's uh, library, which some of these are actually kind of pretty funny to you. So you have a lot of options on there. You can also turn on sentry mode. So anytime it detects someone whose face is not added as a familiar face, you can play a specific sound. So again, you know, you could play, um, for example, a dog barking, uh, which is a pretty good one. Now, if we go into recording mode, this is where you can set it from continuous recording to event recording. And I've only left it on continuous. I wanna get as much as I can get without any type of, you know, breaks in the video. Now, if we go into cloud service, you can see mine is on, it's on the trial period, it's gonna end um, next month on the 6th and whenever you're on the cloud trial it only records event-based clips it will not record continuous only event something to keep in mind if we go into watermark this is where you can set it to have the logo and timestamp timestamp only or none and you can change the time format this is where i can change sensitivity and detection zone so i've set overall detection to be on medium and the detection zone you can go ahead and add in specific areas where you want motion to be detected. And then for human detection, you could actually turn that on or off and you could set the detection sensitivity. Again, I've set it on high. Now, if we go into sound, you could have the option to record sound or not. I haven't found an option to adjust the speaker volume though. If you go into notification, you can have notifications for all of these, you know, but it may be best to just enable, say, ring notification just when you wanna be notified when the doorbell is rang. If you go into sleep mode, basically it's just gonna turn off all of the features. So you see recording live view, LED status light, everything will be turned off. Indicator light, you can have the indicator light on all the time or not. I just have it on all the time so people know it's active. Under paired devices, you can see that we have one chime and you can actually add up to eight chimes here. So you could have one chime on each floor so you can hear it throughout the house. We could have the illuminated ring button so you can see it's just glowing. Night vision, I've set it to automatic and the camera's just gonna determine when to switch over to night vision mode. That's been working excellent for me. In the chime settings, the volume and ringtone is the only notable area. So you can see I have a ringtone called downer and that's a custom one that I set to ring inside the house. So to do a custom one, you click the plus arrow up here and it has to be an MP3 file. You see I've downloaded a bunch of files, but I'm gonna pick this Debbie Downer and perhaps some of you know the reference. I'm gonna say uh, Debbie right here, go to next. I'm gonna pick say Ding da, uh, Hanukkah, let's say to replace, cause you can only have a preset amount. And now we have the downer ringtone saved. Go ahead and save that. And now when I actually ring, or when someone rings the doorbell, I'm gonna hear the downer tone inside my house. <laughs> Reviewing video clips is quite easy. You would click on events and you could see it's categorized by human or motion or a call if someone rings the doorbell. So what I could do is click on this filter icon here and say, okay, well, I only have the one device, but I could say, how about if any time, you know, a human was detected, click confirm and you can see I'm only gonna see human uh, motion on there. But let me exit out of that. You can also go ahead and, you know, delete certain clips if you need to. But let's go ahead and play one of these clips. So I'll play this one, for example, with the car going by. 
While you're reviewing any type of video clip, you could click this download icon here and it's gonna start downloading to your phone. Now, this icon is only gonna appear if you have the cloud plan. If you don't have the cloud plan, basically when you're reviewing the clips, you have a button to manually take a screen recording while it's playing. So that's something I spoke to Wook Labs about. They'll look into possibly having that icon always display regardless of if you're on a cloud plan or a local plan. I think that would be a great quality of life improvement. The video quality was very clear during the day. It was pretty easy to make out faces from delivery drivers, from myself, even from people crossing, you know, to and fro in front of the house, even though they're about a good, you know, say 30 feet away, I was still able to make out, you know, clothes, colors, how many people, pets. Um, it's really an excellent video quality on here. Video quality at night was really good as well. And it didn't really matter if I had kind of like an ambient light from a wall light or a spotlight, or if it was pitch black, it was also very easy to detect them and see all of their facial features as well. When it came to detection, the system is quite sensitive to motion. So I was averaging around 1,380 motion detections a day and that's the average for a four day period, which is really crazy. Now, a couple things to give that context. I live on a corner house. There's cars coming and going up that street all the time. There's kids walking back from school. There's just a ton of traffic. But my motion sensitivity level was set to medium and for human sensitivity, I had set it to high. I also have two trees in front of my house and one of the trees is always swaying. So I know that triggered probably a lot of you know false positives now you can block things out you know you can set like an activity zone where it's only going to detect motion in the area you define the doorbell also has facial recognition and you can also pair specific greetings with those facial profiles and you can see how that could be a lot of fun so for example you know if it's your spouse or a significant other's birthday you can set it for that day that you know when the doorbell recognizes their face while they're standing there it'll play you know a happy birthday tune to them or something that you pre-recorded i've set it so that anytime the doorbell recognizes my face it plays a pre-recorded message that i recorded myself that says hey don't forget to check the mail before you come inside because i have a tendency to forget to check my mailbox don't forget to check the mail before you come inside now i haven't hit a hundred percent success rate with it you know a lot of the times it will recognize my face but there are times when you know i'm standing it didn't recognize my face even though i've been there for a couple of seconds So yeah, it can be hit or miss, but most of the times it is a hit. There is also a sentry mode that you can enable in the app. And the way that works is anytime the doorbell notices a face that isn't added to your familiar faces, it's gonna play, you know, a pre-recorded message that you set or something that you could download from the app or that's preset in the app. This is what audio sounds like coming from the Wookiee Labs doorbell. You can hear that the audio is clear and there's no audio dropouts. Now, what's really funny with this is that you can actually change the tone when you talk to someone so you can have it in your normal voice, you know, a male type of filter, female filter, a neutral filter. This is what the male sounds like. This is what the female voice sounds like. And you can also manually trigger an alarm or a siren. You know, say you pulled up live view, you saw someone kind of like skulking around, they look kind of suspicious, you could just trigger the alarm. This can support up to a 256 gigabyte micro SD card. However, when I installed mine, I only put a 128 gigabyte micro SD card in there. And I set it to record continuously in 2K resolution. Now I was able to get about five to six days of continuous video review based on 2K recordings on a 128 gigabyte micro SD card. So if I was to put in a 256 gigabyte micro SD card, then I'd easily get, you know, 10 days, maybe a little closer to two weeks. So the Whoop 2K Smart Video Doorbell Pro is an awesome doorbell. There's not a lot of doorbells out there that both offer, you know, onboard facial recognition and allows you to associate a custom greeting with that. And it's something you can have a lot of fun with. I also like any time that I have the option to choose between 24 seven recording or motion or event-based recordings because there's a lot of doorbells out there where it's kind of only motion-based or event-based. And anytime you have something like that, there's a chance you may miss, you know, some type of footage. I'm not saying it might be mission critical, 
So anytime I'm presented with the option to pick between motion based or continuous, I always go for continuous recording, even though I'm going to have, you know, less video playback history. I'd like a complete snapshot whenever possible. When you pair that with the awesome video quality that this has, the sensitivity of the motion detection, and most importantly, zero monthly fees. Sure, there is a cloud plan, completely optional. I plan on just running this local storage only 24 seven recording and not having to worry about any type of monthly fees. And that's such a vital factor for me anytime I choose a camera system. I want a camera system where I have full functionality and cloud is completely optional and I can get that with this video doorbell. So if you're interested in picking up the Whoop 2K Video Doorbell Pro, I'm gonna leave some links down below to learn more about it or to pick one up for yourself. And I'm also gonna leave a link down below with a coupon code. If you enjoyed this video, stay tuned for more camera and security videos. I have a lot more coming. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you in the next one soon.